Hello viewers, Whidbey Ben here with another project. Boating season is over, winter is coming, and now it's time to winterize this boat motor. We are on board a 1995 Seasport 27 Pilot. This particular boat is powered by a Volvo Penta AD41 Marine Turbo Diesel. Like most marine inboard outdrive applications, this motor has two cooling circuits. The first cooling circuit is a closed system. This takes antifreeze protected water and circulates it through the engine block using a water pump, but instead of sending it to a radiator, it sends it to a heat exchanger. The second cooling system draws raw water up from the outdrive and circulates it through the heat exchanger as well as other parts of the exhaust system and turbo systems. This water is then sent back out through the outdrive. Before I winterize this boat's motor, I usually do all of the end of season maintenance. This includes changing the engine oil and filter, changing the fine fuel filter, and changing the air filter. This will also involve running the engine using a um, motor flusher connected to fresh water. This will eliminate any salt water from the cooling system and help minimize any potential for corrosion during the winter. One of the first things we did on the end of season was replace the air filter, which is pretty simple. There's a little knob here, you just undo this, the cover comes off, you take the old filter element out and put a new one in and then put the cover back on and tighten up the knob again. This is what the air filter element looks like with the cover off. The other thing that we did that I didn't film was changing the fine fuel filter, which is down here. And the fine fuel filter uh, is full of diesel fuel, so you wanna make sure you put a pan and an absorbent below that. And um, after you replace it, you're gonna have to flush the air out of it, purge the air out of it. And the way to do that is you loosen up this nut on or this bolt on the top and and then you operate this little hand manual handle on the fuel pump here which will then pump fuel through that fuel filter and you'll do that until you see there will be some bubbling coming out around the base of this uh, bolt here and then when all the air is done bubbling through you'll see diesel fuel coming out and then you just tighten that bolt back down. So that's the basics of how you uh, change the uh, fine fuel filter. After changing the fine fuel and air filters, we hooked up the motor to a freshwater flusher and ran it to warm up the motor. This will flush the salt water out of the raw water system and will also make it easier to pump the used motor oil out of the oil pan. Uh, this is a customization that uh, greatly facilitates uh, maintenance. Uh, this is an oil drain tube that was welded to the bottom of the oil pan. So when we need to change the oil, <clears throat> instead of trying to suck it up through the dipstick, you just have to take this little cap off here, and then you can put a suction line right onto the top here. Here's our uh, oil suction pump hooked up to that um, oil drain tube here. So let's just uh, pump out the old oil here. There it goes. Self-priming. Then the oil goes into this bucket here. It's a lot quicker than uh, trying to suck it up through the dipstick. We can hear air being pumped out of the oil sump now, so that means that our pump has done its job. So now we can just disconnect and make sure we don't let any oil drip anywhere. And then recap that uh, oil sump uh, access hose. We can check to see how good of a job that uh, pump did by running the dipstick down here. And the dipstick is reading 
empty. So it did a really good job. The oil filter is on the starboard side of this motor here. Just tuck down into here. There we go. You can see the last time I changed this, I put the date and the number of hours on there. And I also uh, mark quadrants on the filter so I can tell um, how many, uh, how much torque I've applied to after I replace it. But we're going to use um, a web wrench to remove this and then we'll put in the new one. Note that when you're changing the oil filter or any filters on the boat, you really want to make sure that you have an absorptive pad underneath and a pan to back that to catch any drips because when the filter comes out, there's going to be oil in it and it'll run down. You want to try to minimize the amount of oil that ends up down in the bilge. All right, that's what it looks like with the oil filter out of there. Just a little bit of uh, oil dripping there into the little pan that we put with the oil with the absorbent in there. So that kept all that oil out of the bilge. <clears throat> so we'll put some fresh oil on the, on the gasket of the new filter and screw the new filter on. For this uh, big marine diesel, we're using a Chevron D-Lo. And we'll just take a little bit of oil from here and put it around the gasket here before we um, put the new filter on. When we put the new filter in place, we want to spin it until it just makes contact with the base. There it goes. And from there, we want to give it an additional three quarters of a turn. So I've put tick marks on this filter. That's one quarter. That mark over there is two quarters, and then there's another mark for three quarters. I'm going to have to take my gloves off and do this by hand. Never use a filter wrench to tighten the oil filter. Okay, so that's been uh, tightened up three quarters of a turn. So I've gone um, three tick marks that I uh, put on here. I've also labeled the filter with the date and the hours just to be consistent and know when it's going to be due for another change. So we'll get this uh, pan and uh, absorbance out of there to clean up the bilge and move on to the next thing. So the easiest part of this is just adding the new oil. So we take the oil cap off here and we'll use a uh, funnel. And we'll add 11 and a half quarts of DLO through the funnel. Shows oil down there. But we'll uh, run the motor to circulate the oil around and then we'll uh, check the dipstick one last time. We'll be done with the oil change. All right, so we've got the motor running and we've got the oil pressure up here to, looks like 70 PSI. So here's the dipstick after running the, the um, motor and it looks like it's perfect. Okay, well, we have just completed an oil change. Previously, we changed the fuel, the fine fuel filter and the air filter on this um, Volvo um, marine diesel motor. Uh, now to start winterizing it, we're going to need to remove all the salt water out of the uh, cooling system. Um, and that also includes removing salt water from any other, um, or removing water from any other lines. And that also includes, in our case, a uh, raw water line. This boat has a raw water <clears throat> wash down here and um, it has a spigot here and a, a switch back here. So to make sure we get all the water flushed out, we're going to switch it on and we're going to open up the spigot and just make sure we drain out any water that's in it. Looks like there wasn't very much at all. So we'll turn that switch off and we'll close this back again and uh, that part is done. Once all of the end of season maintenance is done, it's time to drain all the water out of the raw water system. Let's take a look at what that will involve. This picture shows the left side or port side of the 8041 uh, motor and um, outdrive uh, unit. <clears throat> the raw water enters into the outdrive here 
He gets sucked up through the shield and then follows, just comes through this hose here. The first component we run into is called the power steering cooler. Then it goes forward in this hose here and then up into the bottom of the raw water impeller assembly. Then it goes up into the raw water strainer. From the strainer, it then travels back down and we'll switch to another picture for that. So switching over to the right side or starboard side of the motor, the raw water strainers here, the water then comes down <clears throat> and then goes through the oil cooler here. And then from the oil cooler, it runs across back to the other side of the engine. So let's go back to the other side here and then goes through this is called the intercooler. Uh, this cools the air coming out of the turbocharger before it goes into the intake manifold. And then it crosses back to the other side again, dropping back down here. Um, goes through the heat exchanger and then from the heat exchanger, it goes into the exhaust elbow and it goes down and then back out through the out drive. Now to winterize this motor, we need to follow the um, seawater and uh, drain all the places where it can be holed up. The, the uh, seawater enters into the motor through the drive shield here. And the first place it ends up is this power steering cooler. And in order to drain this, if I get the camera down there, but there is a, a drain cock. Under here. And um, we're gonna need to use a 13 millimeter wrench to uh, remove that uh, drain cock. Here's the wrench on the drain cock. Here we can see the seawater draining out of that seacock at the bottom of the power steering uh, cooler. This is what the drain cock looks like when it's out. You use the 13 millimeter wrench to break it loose and start it, but you're going to want to use your hand to back it out the rest of the way and hang on to it so it doesn't drop into the bilge. We're going to put this someplace safe for now. This can be replaced either after we're done winterizing or at the start of next season. Let's continue following the seawater path. So that's the power steering cooler that we just drained by removing the drain cock. We follow this up to the front of the motor where it then comes up into the water pump assembly here. On top of that is our seawater strainer. So we'll go ahead and take the lid off of this lid off of that and you're going to want to remove this strainer here and clean it although there's not a whole lot in it we had a pretty clean boating season but we'll take that out and uh, clean it and then we'll re replace that next we'll be removing the impeller cover this is held in place by bronze screws we'll use a flat blade shorty screwdriver to remove these screws this will allow the water to drain out of the impeller chamber. Then we'll also disconnect this hose here, uh, which comes out of the seawater strainer, and we're going to drain this down into the bilge. Okay, this shows with the impeller cover off. We can actually pull the impeller if we wanted to, to inspect it or replace it. Um, I'm actually just going to leave it for now. Uh, um, We'll probably end up putting in a fresh impeller at the beginning of uh, the next season. There is a paper gasket around here. You have to be real careful with that. Um, um, if it dries out, um, it may end up becoming distorted. So I will usually drain this first, and then I'll put the cover back on and um, 
put the screws all back in <clears throat> just to make sure that uh, we don't uh, damage that gasket. But the main thing is to make sure that there's no water in here that can freeze and cause damage. So once you take the cover off and drain that compartment, uh, you'll be good. You'll be good to go. But also make sure that you've uh, drained out the uh, strainer up above it too, so there's no uh, water up there that can drain back down in, into that. And uh, I've loosened up this uh, hose clamp here, and we're just going to pull this hose off. There's some more seawater there. I'm going to take this hose clamp and just put that someplace safe. And now we're going to drop this hose down into the bilge. And just drain that seawater down into the bilge. So, we'll need to remember to reconnect that hose at the beginning of uh, the next season. So if we continue to follow that hose, that'll take us to our next stop. Uh, this is just, I just put this uh, cover back on with the broad screws. That'll help keep that gasket from distorting. <clears throat> and um, the broad screws are not very strong, so make sure you don't over torque them. I just use a stubby screwdriver to just snug them down so that they're not going to come loose, but you don't want to be breaking these things. I've done that by using a wrench on them, so won't be doing that again. You just have to be snug is all. And by using a little stubby screwdriver here, it makes it hard to apply too much torque. The next stop for the uh, raw water is the oil cooler, which is even which is probably just as hard to show you as the uh, power steering cooler. But there it is. So we just need to use that same 13 millimeter wrench to remove that uh, drain cock and uh, drain out the oil cooler. Just show you the wrench on the uh, drain cock here. And uh, I can't really operate the wrench and film at the same time, but just to show you how the wrench fits over that, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the camera out and just remove that drain cock, just like we did the one on the power steering cooler. And here's the drain cock that came out of the oil cooler. It's uh, exactly the same as the one that comes out of the power steering uh, cooler. I always put the parts that I remove while I'm doing the winterization in a little um, container so that uh, <clears throat> I'll uh, be reminded to put them all back in at the start of next season. The uh, next stop on the uh, water path is the uh, heat exchanger here. There is a lower hose that needs to be uh, disconnected so I'll undo that lower hose clamp and just pull that hose off and that will drain the raw water out of the heat exchanger. Here I've got a uh, nut driver on that lower hose here. Just back that out to loosen up the hose. And then we just have to pull that hose off. Okay, we'll drop lower that to let the water water drain out of that into the bilge as well. The last stop for the raw water circuit is the after cooler. This cools the air coming out of the turbocharger before it goes into the intake manifold. There is a 14 millimeter plug on the underside of this. 
you pretty much have to do this all by feel because there's no way you're going to be able to see this plug. But I've got my fingertip on the end of that plug. A 14 millimeter wrench will get that off. Okay, I've got a 14 millimeter wrench on the drain plug just so you can see exactly where it's at and how to access it. We're draining out now that I take that plug out. Alright, so here's my little container with all the parts that I've removed. So I've got two hose clamps, one from the raw water strainer output, one from the lower hose to the uh, heat exchanger. I've got two stop cocks, uh, drain cocks, one from the uh, oil uh, cooler and one from the power steering cooler. And I've got a drain plug from the um, intercooler. So when we uh, get the boat ready for next season, we need to make sure we put all those hoses back together and all those plugs back in. The one other thing we need to do in the engine compartment is a uh, dryer and to drain the uh, bilge out. Uh, this is a commercial engine compartment uh, dryer and this will just help uh, reduce humidity in the engine compartment over the winter. This is plugged into uh, shore power and uh, pretty much takes care of itself. Don't forget to winterize the cabin as well. Pump out holding tanks and flush the toilet, shower sump and macerator with RV antifreeze. Clean the refrigerator and remove the door. Turn off the refrigerator and hot water heater. Drain all fresh water systems and flush with RV antifreeze. Open up storage compartments and place dehumidifiers and a low temperature space heater to control humidity. Connect to shore power and inspect weekly. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. This has been Whidbey Ben. Until next time, bye bye.